Today in the studio, folks, I've got a real treat for you, especially if your back hurts. No, just joking. Folks, if you've ever wanted to talk to somebody or hear somebody that invented an industry, today's the day. We've got Dr. Arlen Four, founder and chairman of Activator Methods International. Welcome. Thank you. To Dropping Bombs. Now, folks, I've known Dr. Four for a while because he's also a Lightspeed VT customer, and he literally revolutionized the chiropractic field several times. The first time was nearly 50 years ago. That's correct. Where you invented that <clears throat> activator. Yes. And an activator method. Yes. And the tool that does it now is used probably by 70, 80% of chiropractors. Yep, 80% now. 80% of chiropractors. That's damn near a whole industry. It's very rare that someone can penetrate an entire industry. So is it because it's so revolutionary or is, what, what, why, why did everybody adopt it? And why aren't the other 20% using it? Well, because people come out of schools with different philosophies. And so it's very difficult. And I'm known as a disruptor because uh, it disrupts the whole chiropractic philosophy because it used to be that chiropractors cracked your neck. I mean, that was that was what people were and chiropractors were known for. And uh, what we found out after we did a little survey is the number one reason that people do not go to a chiropractor is they do not want their neck popped. So that was that was something that we started to see how can we fix this. But I really discovered this because I needed to. We were in a small town of 4,000 people, Redwood Falls, Minnesota. It was farm country, and I'm a farm kid. And so I started practice there in 1964, and we saw a lot of farmers really hurt. I mean, they come in and they couldn't be twisted, they couldn't be turned, or they couldn't have anything done to them that was manual. And so I said to my partner, we have to do, invent something that we can put a high-speed thrust into that body when they're still in such pain. Well, we started looking, and it went, <laughs> there was a lot of different ups and downs in this because it had never been done before. And so we did finally end up with an instrument almost by accident. <clears throat> I had a dentist who was a patient of mine. I told him what I was trying to do, and he said, I think we've got a piece of dental equipment that you might be able to modify. And I said, what do you use it for? He said, we use it to split wisdom teeth. But he said, if you take the scalpel out, you might be able to put a blunt force on it, and you might be able to have a quick thrust into the body. And it worked, and we thought we had died and gone to heaven because all that heavy manual work that we were doing, plus the patient, it was just great. And we so we started building our practice. We were having people come from Minneapolis, 100 miles, to get adjusted because they didn't get hurt. And so we were up to 1,000 patients a week, and it was like it was this phenomena. Well, we never even thought about teaching it to the rest of the profession. We're just happy to have it for our own practice. But then people started to come to us. And I remember our first little seminar was eight doctors. And we, because people wondered what we were doing. And they just wanted to learn because nobody had a practice that big in, in all of the whole country. And so the, the amount of people that we were seeing was what sold it in the beginning. Before we had, you know, now we have 150 peer-reviewed papers. And we, matter of fact, we just got a paper published in scientific reports, which is part of nature. And if you know anything about publishing, nature is the top of the line, looking at osteoporosis. And we wanted to see, can we treat osteoporosis without hurting the patient using a high-speed force? And the answer was yes, but there was another thing that happened. Sometimes in research, you get lucky. And what happened was the trabeculum, that's the little bony growths inside the, the body, in the bone itself, they started regenerating after three weeks of care. So that was a huge thing. And so that's why it got published. And we had one published on osteoarthritis because there's not much you know, cure for osteoarthritis medically. So we're very excited about that. But in the beginning, all we had was clinical results. And it grew like a son of a bitch, didn't it? Yes, it did. Now, now it says co-founder. Who was the other one? Oh, Dr. Lee was the person that sent me to school. Because I was a 12-year-old kid waiting in the waiting room with my mother. And uh, she came out because I'd had sore throats all the time. And I had something like 30 penicillin shots one winter. They used to give little doses every week. And so I had sore throats and could not get rid of them. And my mother pointed at me. I was sitting there doing my schoolwork. And she said, if you could only get that kid well, she said, I'd be grateful forever. And he said, well, 
I don't know, let's put him back and take a look at him. And so they x-rayed me, and I had a neck out of line. Twelve adjustments later, my throat cleared up and never to come back. And as a 12-year-old, I knew I wanted to be somebody like that. I wanted to be able to help people. So I was, from that point on, <clears throat> single-minded in that I wanted to be a chiropractor to help people. Well, pull that mic a little, only a little bit closer, only because you're not, you don't, you're not a boisterous fellow like me. So, you're out of alignment can can make your throat sore. Well, sure. Anytime you have a system that's not functioning correctly, you'll have other things that happen. And so, like we're doing a study right now on visceral things because there's never been a study done, but we're doing it at, in a university in Spain because they're big into molecular biology. So, yeah, I mean, I've taken care of people with uh, mid-back pain and their stomachs cleared up because the nervous system affects all parts of the body. So a lot of people don't go see chiropractors because they think they don't want to get their backs cracked or but they also aren't, perhaps aren't aware of the actual benefits from seeing one. Yeah, and um, again, we're kind of uh, overcoming a lot of these negatives in chiropractic, and, and a lot of it came from the schooling. The schooling today is much better. The, the kids that go through school today have a four-year degree before they ever get into chiropractic college. And so they're quite qualified when they come out. And uh, the research, and I've been working 30 years in research to be able to substantiate what we were doing with little force. And of course, everybody said that can't do anything. And so we just set out to prove that we could change the body when we started using light force that the body would accept. Now, this little tool right here, this activator. Yeah, this is a Generation 5 activator now, and it's uh, all done electronically, and it's got settings on it, so we know exactly how much force is put into the body. And I have a, a friend of mine, uh, a Dr. Michael Liebschner, who is at Baylor University Medical School, and he's the one that helped me do the research on this. As a matter of fact, I'm not a researcher. My wife pointed out to me, I'm a clinician, but she said, I'm real good at finding people to get what I want. And so Michael Liefner was one of those, uh, you know, Berkeley grads, brilliant guy that just had, and he loved to do this. And so he spent about three or four years finding what we call a half sine wave that goes into the body without hurting the patient. So we can adjust you, and there's no you won't even know we've done anything to you until you get off the table. Then all of a sudden you'll start seeing the results. So that's why I'm still doing it 54 years later because it's my life, and that's what I, I really like to do. And if you pulled the trigger, which I don't even know if that's the right thing, but if you use that, does it go dunk? So that just pops? You hear a little click. Now, if you put that on your tooth, would it break your tooth? No. No, because it's not enough force. And so it's, it's almost like a vibration. Yeah, but what it is, there's a, well, the body has what's called a perfect half sine wave, and the body's in motion all the time. And so what we did is match this instrument. And by the way, we had mechanical ones that they used to call the clickers. And uh, we used to have a saying, we took the crack out of chiropractic. And they, they had these little instruments, mechanical, but we could only get them adjusted to a certain level so we could only get a partial half sine wave in until we got to electronics where we put an auto processor in and when we put an auto processor in we could dial it to where we wanted it and i remember dr liebschner the first time that he had it set up the waveforms came in so perfect to the model he did the research over again because he didn't believe it and he said oh my gosh we've got something that we can actually adjust and he likes that kind of thing in discovering new things. So that was a big breakthrough. Mm. So so now, by the way, however many years later, you go in and you guys bring out a virtual interactive training platform that literally can give the doctors the CEs that they need as without leaving their house, basically. Here's a great story. We had been working, well, first of all, my wife was the, I guess you'd say the forward, the strategic thinker on this. She said 10 years ago, this is how we're going to have to teach it online. Now, being an old school hands-on, I said, you can't teach this online. 
And she said, I'm going to hire adult learning specialists and we'll find out if we can teach this online. Well, that Saturday, we were out with our best friends, one who is a colorectal surgeon. And I was telling him how I didn't think we could teach it online. He looked at me and he said, Arlen, he said, if they can teach us an intricate way to sew up a gut, they can teach you how to adjust with that instrument. My mind changed that night because I said, you know, I should have listened to my wife, <laughs> but he was right. If we can do that kind of intricate thing, we can teach them online. So now we started 10 years ago and then we had interactive um, type of programs where students didn't have to go read script and stuff like that. Then we met you and you know, everybody said the millennials can only have an extension or it, they only have an attention span of about six to eight minutes they like it broken down. So remember, we broke it down into six to eight minute segments. And my gosh, it was, they loved it. Now they still didn't accept it yet because that wasn't the way the college is taught. They had to do the hands on. They were just like I was 10 years ago. But there was a little thing that happened. We got this all done and we had it all in the can. He knows a lot of work, by the way. Everybody thinks, you know, when they see that, it's really cool. Well, it is, but they don't realize the behind the scenes, how many people here at Lightspeed have to, engineers, uh, you know, people that do all of the testing and all the script writing and all the things like that to make this come out and making us look really good. So in December of 2019, I have it completed and I'm trying to sell it to the schools. I'm going to the schools and telling them how much this will help their programs and so forth. I can't get any kind of reaction out of them. Fast forward to March, pandemic hits. Kids can't stay in school. They have to, they have to be now farmed out to their dorms and everything like that. And they were at our door. You know, how do we get this? Because they found out we can't produce this quickly. So all of a sudden, we got seven schools signed up overnight, and we downloaded it all into their laptops, and they're continuing right on with their education without missing a beat. Now we take it to our seminar people, and we've got 2,000 people that come to seminars so they can be proficiency rated and up to date. And you might like to know this as listeners. If you want a good chiropractor, you can go to activator.com, and up will flash a little thing and it says, find a doctor. And you can punch on that and it'll bring up the state or whatever. And you just part punch in if you, I'm in Nevada, like I was here, I just punched in Las Vegas. And up came um, a doctor that's proficiency rated in Las Vegas. So, I mean, you can imagine if you were in New York City and you hurt your back, where would you go? You wouldn't know where to go. Well, now all you got to do is put activator.com, boom, up comes a proficiency rated doctor. So it took us 15 years to get 2,000 people doing the same thing. And I'm sure there's variances out there, but at least it's something that a patient can feel good about going to. Now we have a problem. We need more doctors. But that's how that got started. And so patients have been benefiting Last month, we sent 15,000 new patients to our proficiency-rated doctors. Now, these are all satisfied people, and they're calling our office saying, thank you so much. I, you know, I can't thank you enough for helping my son, my daughter, my athletic son, you know, all the different things that people had. So that was a big service that we were able to put out. What if someone with no pain goes to a Cairo? Is there benefits even if there's no pain if you're not experiencing pain because like i want to go get cracked and 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 you know aligned if that's what yep. you call it just to see if anything better can happen but i don't have any pain i don't have any back pain or anything the answer is absolutely like what if my neck's out of alignment right now and i just don't know it that's a good question we have a step-by-step -step methodology and activator methods when we put you down on the table like We've been here all week, you know, doing. I know uh, I should have been a. I yeah. should have been a. a, a I could have a, checked a you every day. Model or, yes. what, or you, yep. you, what do you call that? Well, test subject. Test subject, and uh, as a matter of fact, we had some students here in Las Vegas that came over and laid on the table for eight hours. That was their job, but yes, we put them down. And I have a saying: you have to know where to adjust, when to adjust, and then when to quit, because it's just as important to quit when somebody's lined up. So if I put somebody down that's asymptomatic, that'd be you, 
I would go through a whole routine of testing. And if you had anything that was even starting to get into trouble, we'd pick it up. And I had one of the lecturers here this week, stood all day for eight hours. And he said, I'm not really feeling bad, but he said, would you check me? And he had a low back on, he wasn't even feeling it. So I fixed that for him. So he couldn't wait the next day to get in and get adjusted again before he started his lectures. So yes, we can tell you if you have a problem or if you don't. It's crazy because like normally you'd think you'd have to have some sort of back pain and you see a chiropractor and then they work on you. But when I was out at Nathan's office, some lady walked in, laid on the bed or the little table, and then he went click, click, and she was done. Mm -hmm. That's all it took. Yep. Just a couple of clicks yep. of that machine. Very quick, painless, and very easy to do. Dude, that's crazy that that, that little thing evolved from, from, a, from a dental tool <laughs> and really – it creates now a wave that fixes a body. Yes. That's vibration frequency type stuff. That is correct. Yeah, but that's a heavy duty if you really look at it. Like, Why do you what, think how, nature published it? I mean, they don't publish just because they want to publish <clears throat> something. They're looking for something <clears throat> that's new and exciting. You know, it's it's ironic, too, because my wife's, like, I think she, constant pain in her back, she says, she doesn't ever go to a chiro. What would you say to people walking around with pain to check a chiropractic doctor? Absolutely. Just go uh, find one on activator.com. Go, go to activator.com and find a proficiency rated doctor in your area, and you will be so happy. Uh, yeah, I, Cameron Dudley's here in Las Vegas, and, you know, I know him well. And, uh, Is he a good one? Yes, your wife could go to him with total confidence. Yeah, my wife's not allowed to see any male doctors. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> she can't. <laughs> uh, that's funny we were having dinner last night having a conversation with you don't want your wife to have male trainers like no male trainers no male masseuses do we need to add no male chiropractors to that no i think you're safe because uh they're they're thinking about a whole different thing here well not only that it only takes two seconds right they're not gonna can't have be time that to get close it can't be, can't be that quick um so you were you always entrepreneurial well I guess the answer is yes. I can remember back when I started my own archery shop because I wanted a, a certain bow. And uh, I started my own business because I wanted that. And when I was in chiropractic college, I had an egg business. And uh, we always laughed. We made more money than the professors did <clears throat> in the egg business. And here we were kids from, you know, Minnesota. But we started a business. And in the afternoon, we'd deliver all these eggs to a very wealthy part of St. Louis, and we'd charge them, you know, at that time, I think a dollar a dozen. But, you know, eggs were like 25 cents a dozen. And, uh, yes, so I'd say that I've always been entrepreneurial. I always ask the question, if eggs were 12 cents a dozen, how many would 100 eggs be? A dollar 20. Uh-uh. Oh, 12 cents a dozen. Yeah. And how many eggs? 100. Oh, you have to divide it by 12. Okay. Yeah. Is it, yep. Most people get that wrong. It's yep. funny. Yeah. It's a hundred, it's a, it's a dollar, it's a hundred pennies. Yeah. A dollar. Um, so, so back in this little small town, okay, f all the way up to inventing and, and basically changing an order, because before this, they were just doing it the old-fashioned way. Yes. And now there's just the old-fashioned way and that way. Yes. So 20% still do it an old-fashioned way. Yes. Now, what do people need to know when they walk into the doctor? Can they just say, are you an activator doctor? What are they referred to when they say, do you have that tool? Yeah, you have to be very careful because 80% of people have an activator in the drawer. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean they know how to use it. Mm. So that's why we developed that proficiency rated list because these are people that stay with the program every year. They're up to date. Well, just like last year, all of those 2000 people went through the virtual training and they came back by the way and said they actually enjoyed it more than a live seminar <clears throat> because you remember what you said, you know, you have to repeat repetitive, repetitive. So they could sit there with the program because it's open 30 days where a seminar, they walked in, it was 12 hours, and they walked out, and the thing was over. So here, they can look 30 days. If they got a question, they can go back, and they go through knees. If they want to look at knees, if they want to look at shoulders, whatever they want to look at, they can just go back and do it over. 
So that's why virtual training has been such a success. Has anybody uh, had sexual problems from chiropractic reasons? In other words, like, is there anybody out there that maybe has erectile dysfunction where if they little do they know, just go get adjusted and your shit works again? Not to my knowledge. It's not an issue. Nope. What about, do you guys prescribe medicine? No. So a chiropractic doctor literally is just almost like a naturopath. Well, natu- natu- naturopathy <clears throat> is quite different also because naturopathy, they get into more vitamins and herbs. Yeah, and- but all you're doing is cracking and adjusting and moving. Yep. There's no medicine. Nope. There's no, there's not, there's, you're just no. natural. Yeah. But we also, I mean, most offices are teaching their people how to be uh, naturally healthy. You know, in this COVID thing, everybody was off to, you know, being inoculated and all that kind of thing. But before they could, we advised in, in my office, I'll just take that for an example. I bought a bunch of vitamin C, a bunch of vitamin D, and a bunch of zinc. And everybody didn't have to take it. But I mean, I said, you're smart if you do. We didn't have one problem through the whole thing. And so building that immunity system, you know, that's natural. And people, they want to be healthy, but they don't want to work at being healthy. And so that's what a, a good chiropractor will do. They will, they'll start with the patient. If they're really overweight, they'll start saying, hey, maybe you'd do well to do X, X, and X. And if they trust that doctor, they'll start doing some things. And then when they see, for example, they're having a bad low back and they say, if you lose some weight or a bad knee, then lose some weight. If you lose weight, you're going to help us get you well. And uh, they start seeing the difference. And once they start seeing results, boy, then they become real, you know, followers of it. Is there any danger when people crack necks that aren't chiropractors? Yes. Like you see them do it themselves sometimes. Oh, yeah, because what they're doing is they're experiencing pressure there, and they're trying to relieve it. Now, will they hurt something? I mean, there have been people that have turned around backing out of a garage and had a dissected vertebral artery. So, yes, you can, and so you shouldn't be doing that. But if you're cracking your own neck, that means you've got something that's not balanced in your whole system. What about this? Oh, knuckle cracking? Yeah. It's, Does that do anything? No. Is that just popping synovial fluid? Well, what is that? yes. That's all it is. It's just the gapping. Yeah, and that's so, so is it all false that it'll make your knuckles arthritic? Nah, it doesn't. No. No, they've done several studies on it, and it doesn't change much. Is there any, is there any self studies that someone can do to determine whether or not they're out of alignment or are most people out of alignment? Well, no, most people aren't out of alignment. That's why I said I've had people that have, you know, here's what usually happens. You get a family and in comes the mother and she's got low back problem and you put her on a table and you see she's out of balance. You know, we do leg length analysis and she's out two inches. So you check her, find out where the problem is, you adjust it, and you she balances in position one and position two. The husband's standing there, and he's watching all this, and he says, I wonder if I'm out of alignment. And so they're the next new patient. And I used to have a rule in my old clinic. Everybody comes in the adjusting room. I never will forget this. I had a lady that was a welfare recipient with 12 kids. And she came in, and the rule was everybody comes into the office. And she said, I certainly wish you could do something with this family because there's so many of them so sick. So I said, who is the sickest? And this kid raises his hand. I said, you go over in the sick group. And so we had half of them in the sick group, half of them in the, well, and I never will forget, we put them down and those kids that were in the sick group were all out of balance. And so I just, she didn't have anything at all. And so I just took care of them gratis. And, uh, Literally within 90 days, they were starting to all get well. And she said, it's so great because in Minnesota, she had to stay up at night and keep a wood fire going to keep her children warm. The welfare, county welfare group were so impressed with this that they started covering chiropractic care because it was so much cheaper than the medical care they were giving. So I got the first group of people that were covered by that. We went one whole year, and the only thing they had from the medical doctor was one kid got bit by a dog and had to be sewn up. But that was the only thing that was done. And, of course, she was just thrilled to death, number one, just to have a healthy family. 
This was in a small town. What At what point did you start moving out of that small town? Well, I started to see, because we didn't have any academic community in that small town, there was no college, and I saw that if we were going to grow, that we would have to be close to a, a, a good you know, university so we could go forward with our research. And I'd always had a house in Arizona, and I loved the climate there because, you know, in Minnesota it's so cold, and the older you get, the more cold bothers you. So I was 40 years old, and I loaded up our clinics and everything, sold my clinic, loaded up household goods. And I remember two 48-foot moving vans pulling into Phoenix, Arizona, and the weather was about 110 degrees. Did you like that? Loved it. I never even paid any attention to it. I was so happy to be there. And then I was, at the time, ASU, Arizona State University, had a biomechanics department. And they had a young Berkeley grad that was just starting. And so I went over to meet him, and I took my papers, both of them, <laughs> to him and said, Jack, I'm really interested in you know learning about the body and how we can do things. And he was very kind. He looked at the research, and he said to me, your research, Arlen, is very immature, but you've got some great questions. I'd like to help you. I thought I had died and gone to heaven because here was a PhD in biomechanics now going to help us with our project. So that's how we started our real research project was in, in Phoenix at Arizona State University. What year was that? That would have been 1988. So how long did it take before like you started mopping up and having all the chiros on it? Well, I went to every academic meeting, you know, and uh, again, I'm not an academic, but um, I remember our research team said, I said, what do you, you know, I, I, now I, we just did a randomized control trial, and I thought I was knew all the language and everything like that. And I said, where do you see me on the research team? And the lead PhD said, banker. In other words, you have the ability to raise the money now that you know where you're going, and we'll do the work. You just stay out of it. But I would bring the clinical questions to them. Like, here's what I'd like to solve. How do we fix, well, that osteoporosis, can we safely? Because we've got a big geriatric community. And uh, I love geriatrics because, you know, they're just so grateful for everything. It's kind of like I started the uh, chiropractic program at the VA in Phoenix. And it was one of the most rewarding things. I practiced five years there part-time just to get it started at the VA. And these guys had had back trouble. You know, we were seeing kids come back from Iraq from carrying heavy stuff. They had compressed discs and all kinds of stuff. And they were the most grateful patients of any patient group I've ever taken care of because nobody paid any attention to them. They'd give them a pain pill. Say, here, go try this. And when we started taking care of them, they were, we, we were backed up for 90 days. And we'd have a waiting list of people coming back that really needed care. That's the kind of thing I liked. Well, man, you can... Uh Back pains a, could be a big issue for people. Like, you know, my wife, again, my, I, have, I have a friend. Well, you know, Nathan. Yes. He says, just get a chiropractor. She still hasn't done it, but she literally says she has back pain all the, all the time. She lives with it, and now she's gotten used to it. How, how many people do you think are out there that literally could alleviate a lot of this nonsense just by one or two visits? Oh, there's, there's probably two-thirds of the people out there that would benefit just by one or two visits, uh, the average time for adjusting is, is a couple of weeks, you know, maybe three times a week, maybe six office calls, and you'll see drastic improvement. What's the average office visit cost if, it, if you don't it, have insurance? It, well, it's, ve it's very, well, nowadays the, the deductibles are higher than the insurance, so it's probably 50 to $60 an office call. That's not much. Depending where you're at, yeah. So 300 bucks, 500 yes, bucks. It's, it's nothing. 600 max. Well, and the fact that you might get hooked on opioids or get hooked on a pain pill or something like that, you can't afford to do that, you know. Well, especially opioids. Yes. That's a, like, that's a pandemic. That's a pandemic in and of itself, yes. Yeah. Uh, what, are the, what does the chiropractic world think about the masks and the COVID and the, and the what have you? They're careful. Uh, they... Uh, they want to keep their immune systems up, and uh, they, uh, they're they very careful about how they take care of it. Activator was a big, a good thing for during the pandemic because you didn't have to touch the patient or get close to the patient because you do it with an instrument, and you're, you're not even down close to a patient. So our activator practitioners fared very well. I mean, they wore masks, and they, you know, did that kind of thing. 
but they, they didn't have a big problem with their patients and their patients kept coming during the pandemic. And now after the biggest part of the pandemic seems to be over, their, their practices are flourishing because people were, tight, you know, they were sequestered and they were not socially out. And so they wanted to have contact with people. And so their practices are booming again. I mean, we've talked to some of, you know, we've got a hundred instructors and so we talk to them all the time and they're booming their practices. I had four of them in here the other day working on this new part we're doing here. And <clears throat> each one of them said their practice is up 25% just because of stress and, you know, the, the mental side of it. Yeah. Is there stretching exercises people can do to help? Sure. All exercise, you know, <clears throat> somebody said to me, how, how do you stay so healthy? And I said, well, my wife made me buy a schnauzer. You know, she said, we're going to get a dog. And I'd always been on the road, and I was against dogs. I loved dogs, but I didn't want to have the responsibility for one. So we went to this schnauzer breeder, and we had one all picked out. And in the basket was another little black schnauzer. And uh, I said, what happens to that one? They've been crate mates, you know, since they've been born. She says, nobody wants it because it's black. And I said, so they're going to be broken apart. I said, we can't have that. I'll take her too. So I ended up with two, not one, but two. But every day they want to be walked. And so I'm up out and walking dogs. And so that's why they say, and they've got some studies proving that dog walkers are much more healthy than people that are sedentary. Well, yeah. The big problem is sitting. But what kind of stretches would help? Stretches? Just walking? Walking is, a, is the most natural exercise that you can do. What about running, sprints? It's good. I mean, if you're young, you know, but let's just take people over 50. They don't want to sprint and, you know, go back to walking, just walking. If you can get everybody out walking 20 minutes a day, you could see. You wouldn't want to sprint? Well, you know, I, I'm i not saying that I wouldn't want to, but I mean, I'm just you, saying you can't get people to do it. Well, it's, it's difficult once you get past a certain age. I'm yes. telling you, like the other day I thought, because I used to be lightning fast. I, the other day I, w I went to race somebody and it's like my my mind was going faster than my body would <laughs> and it felt weird it was almost like my legs weren't going high as they used to they weren't they weren't kicking back like it used to it's, it was almost like I was kind of stuck so it's making me want to do wind sprints and get that reconditioning back because I do want to be able to sprint yes but I'm just talking. There's a cartoon that came up on Facebook one day talking about showing all the people in line for their medications. And it showed all the people that were in line for learning how to be healthy. There was no one standing in that line. Because becoming healthy is a project. And you have to eat right. And, you know, Americans, they eat crazy. Yeah. And so that's why <clears throat> if you are careful about your diet, and I watched this week, it was really funny because I had all doctors here that are, you know, doing presentations. And uh, I watched how they ate. They were very careful. They ate, you know, eggs in the morning, fine, I, you know, and they, but they didn't eat a lot of bread. They didn't eat a lot of sweets. I didn't see, I took five of them, five nights to dinner. I didn't see one of them have a dessert. Now, that's just habit. And so we used to say when we're on the road is the hardest thing because everybody is violating, you know, they're having a good time. But uh, the people that are road people, they get used to not having dessert. Just a small thing. A little bit of commitment is all you need. Well, I know that you have people waiting for you. Folks, if you're a chiropractor in the world and you're not on this, which you more than likely are, then where do they reach out? Activator.com? Yes, and they can they can call our headquarters and they you know we do enough advertising in journals they can find our number in in the journals and uh, yeah we're wide open to you know people learning the technique and right now for example they can take light speed and they can if they want to get into our proficiency rated group they take that then we have a all on demand yeah and they and they can take it in their office they can take it during lunch. And then when they, if they get an 80% uh, testing positive rate, then they can 
call our office and, and they'll give them a doctor, one of our instructors in their area, and they can go to their office and have their practical exam and they can become proficiency rated. It's, Which means you start sending a massive amounts of customers. Yes. And by the way, we can track even we can we can track their patients going to them. We can tell how many people are coming in looking to see uh, for that doctor in that area. And that translates into new patients. So it's, it's a good thing for the doctors also. Docs, if you're listening, go get on Activator. Get patients just by being proficiency rated. If you're an individual out there with back pain, go find a chiropractor by going to Activator.com. And I know that, uh, you know, there's people out there, I would say, avoiding a chiropractor that I would highly recommend going to see one. I'm going to get my wife to go see one. Is the one local here that you'd recommend, Dr. Cameron, Cameron Dudley. Cameron Dudley. Yep. Where's he at? He's he's right here in Las Vegas. I know, but it, like there's a big town. Oh, well, go on uh, activator.com. Hopefully and, Henderson area. Yeah, go. Well, you can go on there and put Henderson in and if there's somebody there. I just happen to know him because uh, I've sent several difficult patients to him and he's very good. Well, we're going to do it. I appreciate your time as always. And, hey. and, and if there's anything you want to say to the bomb squad, now's the time. Well, I want to thank the squad for helping us uh, put this all together because they... That's, they, that's they not the Bomb Squad. That's the team. Oh, the team. Yeah, the Bomb Squad's oh, the listeners on the podcast. Oh the, oh, the Bomb Squad, the listeners on... Well, I would say basically the same thing Brad said, that if you are having pain out there and you have been just a little bit afraid to go to a chiropractor, go to activator.com and hit find a doctor and then type in your your state and your address and your town and uh, you'll find a doctor that's qualified and uh, you will be very happy. I can guarantee you that you made that call. And there's no popping. It's the, the, this little tool. It's, it, it, it literally is like click, click, click. And then you're done. There's no cranking. There's no popping noises. No. And you don't have to be afraid if you're 80 years old and you have uh, arthritis and you just like to get relieved. Um, I had a patient last summer that was 92 years old and he, couldn't lay in bed at night anymore. And two adjustments later, I went to see how he was doing, and he said, I slept through the night. I can't thank you enough. So that's that's the benefit of chiropractic. Folks, you heard it from the industry changer, Dr. Arlen Ford, chairman and founder of Activator Methods. Folks, you, do you have a, a Instagram or anything? We do, and I don't know the code word on it. Well, it's probably Activator because I'm surprised you got Activator.com. That's a that's a good URL. Yes, that would, that we've had that for many years, folks. Just Google him. He's he's a he's a interesting fellow. Been in the business a while and and has changed it, revolutionized it twice in one lifetime. Dude, not most people don't revolutionize anything once, let alone twice. Good. Thank you, Brad. You're welcome. Good to have you, folks. Keep it real as always. Dropping bombs with the real Bradley. Subscribe now.